Here we'll learn the functions of the citric acid cycle and its role in human metabolism. To begin, let's list the synonyms for the citric acid cycle. Denote that it's referred to as the Krebs cycle, after the man who discovered it, and the tricarboxylic acid cycle, because many of its intermediates are tricarboxylic acids. To get a sense of what exactly the citric acid cycle is, let's draw it as a traffic circle with many points of exit. Draw a traffic circle with several breakpoints, which represent exits. Indicate that intermediates can exit the citric acid cycle to serve as intermediates for other metabolic pathways in the cell. Show that the main road leading into the cycle is glycolysis. Write that glycolysis is the first phase of glucose breakdown. It leads to the citric acid cycle under aerobic conditions. Show that one of the exits leads to oxidative phosphorylation, which is the final phase of glucose breakdown. Next, let's address the location of the citric acid cycle. Draw a mitochondrion as an oval shape, but leave a window so that we can see its contents. Label its outer membrane, Indicate that it's suspended within the cytosol. Draw an inner membrane with invaginations called cristae. Label the space between the membranes as the intermembrane space. Label the space within the inner membrane as matrix. Indicate that glycolysis, the main road leading to our traffic circle, occurs in the cytosol. Show that it converts glucose to pyruvate which enters the matrix where it's converted to acetyl-CoA. Indicate that acetyl-CoA enters the citric acid cycle, which occurs in the matrix. The major energy carriers of the cycle deliver electrons to the inner membrane where oxidative phosphorylation takes place. Now let's take a closer look at the citric acid cycle. First draw pyruvate in the cytosol. Draw the layers of the mitochondrial membrane below it. Specifically label the inner mitochondrial membrane and the matrix within it. Show that pyruvate must be actively transported from the cytosol into the mitochondrial matrix. Now draw acetyl-CoA, the first intermediate in the cycle, as a two-carbon acetyl group bound to coenzyme A. Show that pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA in the matrix. Pyruvate dehydrogenase catalyzes this reaction, we covered in detail elsewhere. Indicate that acetyl-CoA is produced when any of the following molecules are broken down. Carbohydrates, which are first broken down to pyruvate, fatty acids, and amino acids. We'll focus on carbohydrate breakdown and in particular glucose breakdown. Indicate that the citric acid cycle is the second step in glucose breakdown. From here, we'll draw the intermediates of the cycle, as well as the energy and waste products. Let's start with the intermediates of the citric acid cycle, since we have already drawn the first, acetyl-CoA. Next, draw oxaloacetate as a four-carbon structure. Use arrows to show that it combines with the two-carbon acetyl group in acetyl-CoA to form a third intermediate. Coenzyme A leaves at this step. Indicate that the third intermediate is citrate, a six carbon molecule. Now fill in the remaining intermediates of our driving circle as follows. Isocitrate, an isomer of citrate. Alpha ketoglutarate, a five carbon molecule. Succinyl-CoA, a four carbon molecule bound to coenzyme A. Complete the cycle with the remaining four carbon intermediates, succinate, fumarate, and malate. Show that malate is oxidized to oxaloacetate, thus completing the cycle. We can remember these intermediates in the order in which they appear by using a simple mnemonic. O, can, I, keep, studying, science, for med school. Finally, let's add the energy and waste products of the cycle. We'll start with the waste, carbon dioxide. Show that carbon dioxide is released whenever an intermediate loses a carbon molecule. 
three carbon pyruvate forms two carbon acetyl CoA, six carbon isocitrate forms five carbon alpha ketoglutarate, five carbon alpha ketoglutarate forms four carbon succinyl CoA. The cycle also produces water, but we'll not draw this here. Now let's add the energy products, NADH, FADH2, and ATP. Show that one NAD plus is reduced to NADH in the same three reactions that release carbon dioxide. Indicate that a final NAD plus is reduced in the oxidation of malate to oxaloacetate. Show that FAD is reduced to FADH2 when succinate is oxidized to fumarate. Associate the F in FAD with the F in fumarate to help remember this. Show that these reduced carriers then shuttle their high energy cargo to the inner mitochondrial membrane where oxidative phosphorylation occurs. Finally, illustrate that succinyl CoA loses its coenzyme group via substrate level phosphorylation, which produces ATP from ADP and phosphate. The citric acid cycle completes the oxidation of glucose via these redox reactions, which reduce NAD plus and FAD. However, this cycle could not continue to turn without the third phase of glucose breakdown, oxidative phosphorylation, which recycles NAD plus and FAD. As a clinical correlation, to note that metabolic defects in the citric acid cycle are exceedingly rare because the cycle is so essential to our body's production of energy. For example, when glucose in the body is low, muscle cells use the citric acid cycle to break down fatty acids for energy. This saves glucose for essential tissues like the brain and red blood cells that can't metabolize fats. This concludes our diagram.